Hello dear researchers, I hope you are doing great. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to analyze and interpret Likert scale questionnaires using spaces. So uh, let's go to the spaces file. We are going to go to this. So we have this uh, spaces file in which, that, uh, in which there are some statements of Likert uh, scale types that range from strongly agree or disagree to strongly agree so we want to analyze these statements and we want to put them in one table with frequencies and percentages and we want to do some visualizations of this data set with some uh, appropriate charts be the bar charts or uh, stacked bar charts so let's start the work so to analyze these uh, statements, we need to go to analyze and then we go to tables and then custom tables. Click there. So you, there will be a message that you will show up to you. You click OK and then you have this window. So then what we will do is that we will just move the items of the Likert scale to the row box. So we can just select them all together by clicking control and select till we finish and then we move them at once here so they will show up this way uh, then we will just go here and change this row labels into columns and we can here put rows and then here we can click hide and for summary statistics we can go here again and choose percentage so if we want to include uh, percentages of course so we can just go to this option and move it here so then apply to selection close ok and we wait for the output so here is the output that contains the items together along with uh, the uh, frequencies and the uh, percentages so i can just copy and paste this table to microsoft office word okay so this is how i can just uh, have this table and imagine that I want to do some visualizations of this table. So what I will do is that I will just go back to the eSpaces file, go to analyze tables again, custom tables, and then I will just remove one thing. I will remove the percentage. So I will keep just the count or I can remove the count and keep just the percentage. So either way you want to, to have on the uh, chart so I can just uh, remove the percentage I keep the count so click apply to selection close again ok and here you go so once you have this table you can just double click the table and you go to pivot table and you click transpose rows and columns then I will have the table this way then double click ok you can double click till you see this and then uh, right click and you go to create graph and you create bar graph and wait for it so here is the bar graph that you can have about the items and their uh, frequencies so if we want to change this uh, shape we can just uh, double click again uh, so if we want to change this bar graph into let's say stacked bar graph so that we can condense the items together so i just click here and i can double click and I go to variables and I go again to uh, style so style keep it like this so I can go to cluster and I can go to stack okay click there and click apply and here you go again so we'll come up with a stacked bar chart which is a nice one like this with the items of the Likert scale along with the coding you can see here so the majority of the respondents uh, either agree or strongly agree and some uh, disagree and or strongly disagree and you can even add the, the exact numbers so you go to elements and you click show data labels and click close so you will have it this way you see so you can just copy this uh, graph and paste it again as a visualization of your data set all right so this is how you can go about analyzing Likert scale 
uh, and interpreting the results like based on those who agree or strongly disagree etc along with their frequencies and percentages what you can do also you can conduct some tests like logistic regression like one-way analysis of variance like uh, independent sample t-test like many tests that can be conducted using the Likert scale on the one hand and some other independent variables on the other hand there are in fact different approaches that can be used to analyze Likert scale uh, if you have questions or remarks do not hesitate to post them below or contact me via one of my social media I can uh, provide you with the personal information in the command section below what I would like to tell you of course there are uh, other tests that can be used like the very advanced tests depending on oh, your research questions your research variables or your research uh, hypotheses and many things that can be taken into consideration so it really depends on what you actually want to do with the the questionnaire and it depends mostly on your research objectives research questions research hypotheses and uh of course your research design etc because there are some designs that are exploratory in nature you just describe but there are designs that are confirmatory in nature in the sense that you confirm like you test hypotheses like the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis among others you see so uh it depends on what you want to do with the the, the Likert scale so there are all different possibilities uh, so in, on this channel i keep posting content that is related to how you can uh, analyze Likert scale and you can just uh, get access to the channel and you will see all the videos listed there and you can pick up the video that will be appropriate to you depending on your needs and you can just follow the steps or you can just uh, uh do a lot of things like before analyze the lacquer scale maybe you need to keep testing uh, some assumptions like uh, reliability like uh, a lot of things like normality among other assumptions so it, but honestly i can just tell you that from the descriptive stuff you can see that the majority of the respondents agree as you can focus on this area here so this is how you can interpret the results so the majority of the respondents agree here you say that the higher percentages are located on this area which correspond mostly to agree and strongly agree as you can see whereas the other parts receive a disagreement or strong disagreement which constitute let's say the minority in terms we can see them just the numbers like this they are really a uh, low number so it's it's really straightforward to see i had the trends of the data and highly i highly believe that this lacquer scale is reliable just simply by looking at the agreement and this is this rather strong agreement because simply reliability means consistency and means that all items should either agree or should either disagree so there should no uh, uh there should not be some let's say biases or ups and downs with regard to the agreement and disagreement why because the Likert scale is supposed to test one construct like one variable uh, suppose that this is just in for instance some practices that are do, uh, done by uh, let's say teachers to uh, you know with regard to uh, assessing their students etc so all the items should be uh, agreed on otherwise if you find some items that receive for for instance some disagreement or anything like this you may analyze them using uh, a lot of tests like what like uh, or rather you should do some some pretests to 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 let's say uh, fix this reliability you can do what else you can you can actually uh, reverse code items especially negatively worded items so that they will show agreement or disagreement so this is called reverse coding and of course there is a video on this on this youtube channel so you can double check it there are other uh, let's say procedures that can be followed to again uh, fix reliability like delete items uh, if reliability is not good there are a lot of tests that can be done then you can test also validity and there are like different types of validity like convergent and divergent validity so uh, so so as to test whether the, the Likert scale items like either converge or 
uh, diverse, like there is this discriminant validity, like they constitute separate uh, uh, items. Then there is also a principal component analysis in which you just uh, actually uh, do what? You just actually uh, see how the items are grouped together to form a construct. This is called a principal component analysis in the sense that you just uh, have a number of items that say 20 items or so. So you need just to uh, group them together in ter terms of themes like each four items, for instance, can be uh, grouped in their a theme and this is uh, statistically computed. There is also this test of, uh, uh, yeah, we call it exploratory factor analysis or confirmatory factor analysis. So these are all the tests that can be used to pretest this reliability or uh, validity and this construct validity, so to speak, about the Likert scale. And you can either analyze them, Likert scale items separately one by one, or you can group them together into one, uh, let's say, uh, variable and this way you will need to uh, compute the mean score or the overall mean score of the Likert scale items into one uh, variable so that you can run the analysis so there are a lot of tests that can be used as I told you and it depends on all so it all depends on your needs and what you want to to have and what you want to do with the analysis and how you want to interpret the results Okay, so uh, yeah, so there are many tests and it all depends, as I said, on what you want to do, but in relation to your research objectives, your research questions, your research hypotheses, etc. Sometimes these things keep changing throughout the research because we encounter new results, so we can a little bit modify them and we can a little bit change them depending on uh, what the analysis yields so that we can optimize the research process. Uh, this is like, uh, I mean, these are the, the main tips that I can give you with regard to the Likert scale item and uh, the Likert scale questionnaires. And uh, the most important thing, sometimes you can go for inferential statistical tests, like uh, especially in advanced ones like regression or simple linear regression, multiple regression, binary logistic regression, among others in addition to other tests like chi-square tests and independent sample t-tests and paired sample t-tests uh, and even one sample t-test like there are different tests that can be used as i told you and it all depends on what you want so i can uh, explain further things uh, using another tutorial or another tutorial uh, do not forget to subscribe and share the content if you think this is interesting because this is what can just encourage me to post more videos uh, because you know uh, if i don't receive uh, let's say if i don't think that this content is important i'm i'm not going to keep posting uh, on it anything so of course there are other things that can be posted and a lot of things that can be said using spss and even using excel without having to use this spaces you can even use r or r studio this is like another software that can be used and it requires knowledge of data coding it is really so this is like the r studio so you can just uh, uh, analyze whatever you want using some packages like uh, many packages that can be used for data analysis and you can use even ggplot, etc., to analyze your your data. You see, so there are a lot of tests that can be, in fact, used to analyze to, to to analyze the data. And even there are a lot of programs or software that can be used to analyze data. And it all depends on 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 what you want to do with it. So this R Studio is a free software, so you can get access to it without having to purchase any license of the spaces. Uh, software, uh, especially for uh, students whose institutions do not give them uh, this access to this software. So uh, this is like the uh, main thing with regard to this software, and it can provide you even with some good visualizations of the data, some some advanced tests, etc. And most students use this, and you can even analyze your questionnaire on Excel. Your Monkey, survey monkey 
Google Forms and even Qualtrics uh, using this uh, R Studio, of course, and even uh, Stata. This is, this is another, uh, again, software that can be used. And there is a Power BI. There are, in fact, many uh, programs that can be used. So it all depends on what you, you want to do with this. So anyways, so that I'm not going to make this video uh, long. Uh, this is all. If you have questions or remarks, not hesitate to post them below or contact me for uh, any uh, help. Uh, see you in another tutorial. Bye for now.